Welcome to Blade HQ, everybody. Today is June 12th, and we have a offering of knives to talk about with one of the more bizarre looking designs I've seen around town. Let's talk about it. First knife on the table consists of the two new exclusive Boker Papillons. Heard in the comments how to pronounce the word. It's, it's French and it's Papillon, and apparently it means butterfly, which I think is fitting because this is a butterfly knife. So we have this one in all black with the steel handles and the, the live edge as well, and running on bearings. It's a solid butterfly knife. And then we also have the Stormtrooper variant because who doesn't love a good white handle with a black blade? I really like this. I almost wish this was the colorway we did on the Lucha we did because we have a Kershaw Lucha with the white blade and the white handle. The white's great, but I think the contrast of the black looks good, especially in some of those faster flipping mechanisms, which, I mean, even, even the slow flips like I do, I think the contrasting colors kind of lend some appearance to it. That's a lot of fun. Anyway, these are new exclusives. You're getting that uh, D2 blade steel. I always get these confused with the Luchas, which they have 14C28 in. This is D2, solid deal for $89.95. You're getting a really fun knife, very fast action, a latch that you can remove if you so desire. It's a solid knife. And for 90 bucks, you can't go wrong. Next up, new from Tor Knives, we have this bizarre thing. Before I open it up, look at this sheath. So it's a folded, like, taco-style Kydex. And here you have this access to the sort of seatbelt cutter. And then when you pull it out of the sheath, be sure not to hook it on the Kydex, you have the actual knife. And it's S35VN, and look how enormously thick this handle is. Excuse me, this blade steel. It just is something you want to grip and rip. You want to smash stuff and pry and all that. And it, it, it's called the egress. So you know this is sort of designed as a, a extrication rescue style knife. So on the back of the pommel here, you have a ball bearing glass breaker. Then you have a nice fine edge. And then this very large serration. It kind of reminds me of the VEF serrations from CRKT. And then these big old serrations on the back as well. So it'll chop, hack, chew through whatever man-made materials you're going through. It's made by Tour Knives, so that means you know it's also a tactical knife. And I don't know the first thing about knife fighting. I've said that a million times. But I imagine you could do a lot worse than this. So if you're looking for sort of like a, an on-the-vest carry or in-the-pack carry knife that is a great thing to slide into the defense role as well as the rescue role, I think the Tour Egress sort of walks that line very nicely. Next up, new from CRKT, we have the Squid XM Flipper with this denim micarta handle. And I really like denim micarta. Like it has a nice blue to it. It reminds me of blue jeans and I suppose that's because they're made of the same material. But the Squid XM here lightens up quite a bit with that. And this one's a manual version. So it's running on bearings, very nice flipper or thumb stud action. Lucas Burnley design. You know it and love it, and it lightens up with the micarta, so it's a great carving knife or a great EDC knife or whatever whatever simple, small tasks you're doing. Like all Lucas Burnley designs, this just excels. And once again, like all CRKT knives, great pricing, $49.95 for this thing. I'm excited to see that. I loved the original squid design. It was, it was cute, it was nice in the hand, but sometimes you want something a little bit bigger and I think the XM was great, and now you can get it with the micarta handle and this sort of a different take on it. I don't think they had a regular size squid with the denim micarta, which is a crying shame if you ask me, because I really love the looks of this thing. It's got a deep carry pocket clip on the back and a frame lock mechanism, so it's gonna be strong enough to handle whatever you're throwing at it, and it's just gonna vanish in your pocket because look how thin that knife is. Super nice in the pocket. Lucas Burnley. Doing great stuff once again. Now is a good time to take a break and tell you all about this finger. I was trying to cut some ice cream because I believe that when you have a carton of ice cream, the, the kitchen knife is the way to produce proper sized portions of it. And I was trying to cut the carton off and I got my finger, got a bunch of stitches. It was a great time. But I just know every time I have band-aids or something on my fingers, people are like, dude, you're always cutting your hands. And I'm like, I work with knives. Moving on along, we have the CRKT Pursue and Momentum knives. These are both Michael Walker designs and they were sort of the big new feature at Blade Show from CRKT. I wanna to talk to you a little about, I would say, knife tradition and theory. I am a proponent that if you are going to make a knife company, you should start with something super premium, build a reputation for that, and then release a budget series. 
CRKT sort of went the other route here. They started with the budget-friendly stuff like the Squid XM we just talked about. They offer a great knife from a really cool designer at a very accessible price. And then, later on, they contracted stuff through manufacturers in Italy, used very fine materials, and they made these absolute beauties of knives. And some people are saying, oh, I'd never pay $400 for a CRKT like you're getting here. But let, let's back up for a moment. Forget the CRKT, because we all know that CRKT is known for their budget stuff. But let's just say, made in Italy, a super nice damascus steel blade, this beautiful gold fat carbon fiber, a mother of pearl inlay, titanium liner lock, milled clip, perfect tolerances, beautiful action. It's a great knife. It just happens to be a CRKT. Just think, yes, this is a CRKT, but it's a really premium knife as well. And it comes from Michael Walker. And if you do not know that name, you should know that name. He contributed very heavily to the knife industry. In fact, the last knife on the table is a Spyderco, and it's running a liner lock. And that is a mechanism invented by Michael Walker. And it has found its way onto thousands of knives since its patent expired. And it is one of the most well-known mechanisms there is. And this is one of his custom models, this here Pursue, that has been produced as a production knife. It's really a cool story that you went from I mean, he had this log cabin shop in New Mexico in which he made a bunch of custom knives. He just kept making these custom knives until he earned some clout in the production world. And that's why the Spyderco catalogs will always call it the Walker Liner Lock because he invented it and Spyderco is committed to always honoring the inventors of these things. But now we're getting some of his customs that used to only be accessible once in a blue moon when he brought one to a show and thousands of dollars of expense to get one. Just something that you can get for $400, made in Italy to the highest of standards that you can carry every single day and carry a piece of the legend with you. And if you're not feeling the $400 for this damascus steel version, there's also the Momentum here, which you can get for $275. It's got the M390 blade and this beautifully milled and differentially anodized titanium handle. I love this like green that matches with the very vibrant blue in the jigging. It definitely feels like a Michael Walker. It feels like something he would put his stamp of approval on, but at 275, you're looking at the same price as a lot of Benchmade knives, a lot of Spydercos, a lot of these really well-known USA-made brands, and you can get, I would say, equivalent quality level of an everyday carry knife for Michael Walker. Very exciting. These are limited editions, however, so pick them up before they're gone, because when they're gone, they are gone forever. And then like we mentioned earlier, the last knife on the table is the Spyderco Ambitious. And this one's got the S35VN blade and a blue FRN handle. They originally did this with the Tenacious. And I love the Tenacious. It might just be a little big for my tastes. This is the one though. That handle is just barely big enough for me to get my fourth finger on. Great everyday carry size. Great to choke up on like so. And I went with serrations on this one because first of all, I've learned that perhaps I don't give serrations the love they deserve. I was talking to Lynn Thompson, the founder of Cold Steel at Blade Show, and I asked him why he carried two serrated vaqueros every day. And he said, because with serrations, it is one more cut, no matter what. You round over the edge of your plain edge, and it's dull, it's like a butter knife. But with serrations, there will always be teeth. And there's always gonna be a little bit of difference in the edge that can just chip away at something. It might be difficult, but you'll always get one more cut. And I appreciate that out of serrations, especially with the, with the added edge retention of CPM S35VN. So if you are looking to get somebody a gift, a knife that is something that will, they'll carry because it's small enough, it looks good, and it's gonna be low maintenance, I would recommend this guy right here. It's 9520, so it's not ridiculously expensive, but you're getting a good quality product, getting a great steel, you're getting an edge that will be sharp for the rest of this person's life and a really nice liner lock mechanism. It's a solid knife all around. And if you disagree with me and Lynn on serrations, they get the plain edge version, it's the same price. Anyway, that is new knives for this week. Hope you've enjoyed. You'll find links to all of these in the description. Head over to Blade HQ to check out all of these knives and more. Subscribe for more knife content. We'll see you next time.